so it's time to make some production files so we are in the PCB new program here and from here we can produce Gerber files and drill files and we do that from this um, plot menu here and we select which layer we want to plot out as Gerber files and then we send them to a PCB manufacturer but instead of showing you how this works from the beginning I think we should start with the requirements from the PCB manufacturers so let's uh, close this and I'm using a manufacturer called Euro Circuits and this is their homepage and before you create any kind of files you should know the manufacturer's PCB design guidelines so here we can go in and download a PDF file which I have done here before and this PDF file describes three major things and that's the best practice how to design your PCB for reduction of cost and minimize the risk of errors during manufacturing so it has three parts price best practice and manufacturing errors the first thing we need to know is the type of files that the manufacturer wants you to send them and in Eurocircus case they need Gerber files with the format RS274X which is the extended Gerber file format and they also need drill files in the Excellen 1 or Excellen 2 file format and um, Eurocircuits preferred this type of Gerber file and the Gerber file is mainly the, the pad size and the, the wires between pads and text printed on a silk screen and things like that on your PCB uh, the drill files is a file that says where the drill should be drilling and the, the dimension of the drills to be used and your circuits also use something called PCB visualizer which means you can upload your file and watch them from your circuits program on, on the web and PCB visualizer also tells you if there are any errors that you need to correct another thing to know is we should only provide um, your circuits with the Gerber files and the drill files you shouldn't have files like Word documents or PDFs or something in, in the folder that you send them usually you take a folder put all the files in it and then you zip that file and then you upload it on their website and of course you should always check the output before you order the things we should go through that later and the file naming is of course generated by KiCad and they are quite clear so you don't have to rename the files and one thing you should think of is that uh, you should use the same units for everything uh, if you change the units from millimeter to inch back and forth you can get some rounding errors and there are also other things you can read about here for instance, Eurocircuits prefer that you write top and bottom on your top and bottom layer, on the copper layer, like this. We have done that in our design. We wrote top and bot, and that helps the production people at Eurocircuit to place these masks the right side up. and you can also have your company name this is also a guide for the manufacturing people to see which side is up and which side is down and Eurocircuits 
apparently wants us to include the board outlines on all layers. So there's a setting in KiCad for doing that that we should switch on. And this um, document tells all the different classes they have at EuroCircuits. Class 3, Class 4, Class 5, Class 6, Class 7. And basically it costs more to have a more fine pitch on thing. So Class 3 is quite wide track width, while as class, let's see here, class 10 is probably quite expensive to use. So this is a list that you can use to set up KiCad to different design rule standards, so to speak. And this is quite important here. All PCB drills are manufactured in increments of 0 0.05 millimeters. So you can't define a drill size that's, let's say, 0 0.53212 millimeters wide in diameter. Is they round that up or down to the nearest 0 0.05 millimeter standard. And that's what they explain here. And then we go to general design rules. You shouldn't have drills this close to each other, for instance. And pad holes and uh, drills in pads should be centered. And that's this, this is okay, it's centered and it has some distance to the edge here, so it's okay. This one this is also accepted, I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, it actually goes right to the edge, the drill hole here of the pad. But this is not accepted. This will generate an error at the Euro Circuits design rule check. The, the drill hole is outside of the pad here. And of course that's not good. And you should also have it in the center, but you can also have it shifted a little bit a little bit up or a little bit down, but not too much, then it's not accepted. And here they tell us that the board outline should be on every couple layer. And some basic rule on how to draw wires on your PCB. You should avoid small pockets like this. Instead you should go out with this a little bit more. The distance here is too narrow. And in this case you should maybe go start down here, go up there and then up to that pad and up here. 45 degree angle there and up here. And that would look much nicer. And here you can read the reasons for all this. Basically you can hurt uh, the, the wires if you do this. You just read this. And some more general rules. You should uh, read this more carefully. I just take the most important things here. And this is a nice advice. Uh, leave the solder mask pads at the same size at the, as the uh, copper pads. So usually you have a solder mask that goes a little bit outside of the copper pads, like this. But you can design the solder mask so it just goes the same size as the copper pad. Your circuits will modify that to their needs. For instance, if you have like a TQFP like this and you have a solder mask that overlaps like this, it's better to have it just like on the copper pad. So in this case it's probably less than 0 0.8 millimeters between these, so they will just remove, they will create a mask that goes from that corner over there and down here. So the um, 
so the mosque here will be removed all the way here, probably. And you have some minimum size of how small silk screen text you can do. And you shouldn't place silk screen above pads like this. Uh, apparently, your circuits remove a silk screen with some margins here, like 0.1 millimeter margin around this pad. You should think about that. And here are some instructions on how to do carbon patterns. Yeah. And there's lots of information here. And I think you should read this uh, several times. You learn something new every time. And with this knowledge, is, let's go back to the PCB new and generate the files. Okay, let's go up to the plot icon here. And from here we can generate different types of files, the like Gerber files, PostScript files, SVG files, and so on. In this case we're gonna produce Gerber files. In the documentation it said we should have the scaling one-to-one, -one, which we have. We should include one file for the front copper layer, one file for the bottom copper layer, one for the front silk layer. On the bottom silk layer we do not have anything printed so we can remove that. And then we need to have uh, the edge cut, a separate file for edge cut. And we also need to check for uh, solder mask in the front side and solder mask for the bottom side. And the manufacturer wanted to have uh, the edge cut on all layers and here we exclude PCB edge layer from the other layers. We don't want to exclude it from every layer. We want to have it on uh, each layer because Euro circuit said that in their documentation and we need an output directory to put the files in. So let's browse and my desktop. Let's create a folder here. A new folder called it my Gerbers. So we select that. Use relative path now. And then we should just press plot and the file should have been created now. Let's open up my Gerbers. We have bottom copper, bottom mask, edge cuts, front copper, front mask and front silk. So let's generate the drill file as well. We do that on the same place, this uh, plot window. And we go down here, generate drill files. The output directory is set to my Gerber's folder on my desktop. And we just press drill files, which will generate the drill files. So it's called switch.drl. Close that, close that. Let's look in our folder again. Uh, Magerbus. And there we have that file, the drill file. These are all the files that we need to send to EuroCircuits to manufacture. But EuroCircuits wants the file in a zipped file, so let's close that down. So we created a zip file here. Now it's time to go into EuroCircuits again and log in. And if you haven't created an account yet, you can do that as well if you want. But I have already created an account. And here is a list of files that I have created before. I haven't produced this yet. Uh, and we should import our file and it should show up in this shopping basket. So we go to calculate an order. And first we need to analyze. So analyze your data. 
we'll give the PCB name a name, say switch, upload data file and choose file. We go to my desktop and choose the uh, zipped file. Open it up, go continue. You can see that it's processing these files here. It says processing and a little turning thingy. So after a while, uh, the file is processed. And in this case, there's a little blue exclamation mark here on our switch board. And the exclamation mark says that something has gone wrong, so let's click that. PCB visualizer. And here we have some message. The correct board buildup could not be determined. And what does that mean? Well, there's a little light bulb here. So you can click that. And there you have the explanation for it. It, it seems like this is something that some technician at the Eurocircus will fix for us. So it's not actually anything wrong. Uh, but if they have any problem, they will send a mail back to us describing what we need to change. So in this case, we can just order the things and it should be okay. Uh, for now, I don't want to order this, but uh, we can take a look at the other printed circuit board I have put in my basket. Let's see here. Go back a while here, shopping basket. And here we have an exclamation mark that is yellow. So let's click that. This is another board that I have made a long time ago. And here we have a remark. Some of the measured values do not match the required values. Select the required values to ignore the measured values or select the measured value to accept the measured value. Then press apply to save the selections. Okay, so it's measured something that is zero millimeter and it requires it to be 0.2 millimeter. So let's select that and apply. So now the problem should be fixed. And I happen to know that this specific error was that the drill sizes were too near the edge of the of the mounting hole there. So we just added some padding to that. That's one way to do it. And the other way is to find out what actually is wrong and then go back to your own design files and change it there. So that's how you do that. So you can go PCB checker and here we have the issues. Here are 19 issues and four issues there, four issues there. And it marks here we have some problem, here we have some problem, and so on. And you can see this is the the problem that occurred before that there was a design rule violation here that we just fixed by by saying to your circuit that fix this. So it should be ready to order that one. So if you look at our basket, basket here again, we should just go and select that and order as many pieces as we would like. I will not do that because I don't want to manufacture this at all, but this is how you do it. Another thing we can do is to look at the Gerber file from the Gerber viewer. Uh, no, that's not the one. Gerber viewer, there we have it. So we just load the Gerber files, select all, which we had on the folder on my desktop. So open up. And here is how the Gerber file looks. So you can deselect several layers here. And you can take a look at layer one. That seems to be the bottom layer. Layer two seems to be some drill holes or something. Could it be that? Mm, or something else. This is the edge cut and this is the top copper fill. These are some pads. 
This seems to be the silk screen on the top, so you can view your Gerber file this way. And of course you can do that in the visualizer on uh, EuroCircuits and other PCB manufacturer has similar tools that you can use for this. So this concludes this video and see you in the next one.